Hey y'all, so this video is going to be not only for the end of the year for Algebra 2, but it's also going to be for the beginning of the year for pre-calc trig. Okay, it all starts with unit circle. So this is going to be a true introduction to the unit circle. At the end of the video, I will show you my tips and tricks on how to um, write out the unit circle very quickly on your test so that you can just refer back to it. And let's get started. So this is a complete unit circle, okay? Uh, one thing that I do want you to understand is that it is centered on your x, y axis, okay? This is zero, zero here. And um, that the radius of a unit circle is one. So all of these lines from the center of the circle to the edge of a circle is all one, okay? That's why it's called a unit circle. Okay, so you can see here, this point is one, zero, this point, zero, one, this point, negative one, zero, and here, zero, negative one, okay? So that is the biggest concept to grasp, is that this is on an x, y grid, and these points are x and y. So you can see here, x and y. But one thing about that is unique about the unit circle is that the x represents the cosine of the angle, and y represents the sine of the angle, okay? So further along, I'll go over this a little bit more, but just for a quick introduction, if somebody says, what's the sine of 30 degrees, okay, you you know that the sine is the y of the point, so you just go to your point, one half, so the sine of 30 degrees, one half, okay? Now, in our next video, we will get into tan, uh, cotan, secant, and cosecant, because those are all based off of sine and cosine, okay? Also, I apologize if I sound nasally. The pollen has been so bad here in Central Florida, and I'm getting over a really bad allergy attack that I've had for a week, so um, please bear with me. Again, I apologize. So, okay, so this is our big overview. Now, how do we get to all these different points? First, I'm gonna break this down into um, our 45 degree angles and then our 30, 60 degree angles, okay? So let's look at that real quick. All right, so here we have our 45 angles and here we have our 30, 60 angles. So 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. And if you can recall from algebra or from geometry, really, um, 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. We're actually gonna be using that here coming up, but I just want to count um, degrees and radians with you guys first so you can see how everything happens, okay? So, Again, here's zero degrees. We add 45, so this is 45. And each time you have a line, you're just gonna add 45 degrees because each angle here is 45, okay? This angle between here and here is 45. Between here and here is 45, and so on and so forth. So we have zero, 45, 90. Okay, then 90 plus 45 is 135. And then add another 45, we get 180. Another 45, we get 225. Another 45, we get 270. And another 45, we get 315. Another 45, we get 360, okay? Now, what about your 30, 60, 90 ones? So just as each angle here was 45 degrees, each angle here is just gonna be 30 degrees. So again, we start at zero. At 30, we get 30. Add another 30, 60. Add another 30, 90. Again, add another 30, 120. Plus 30 again, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330. Whoops. Oh my goodness. 330, 360, okay? Now, when we put these all together and combine the two that I have separated, combine them together, we go back and we have the original unit circle. So we have 30, 45, 60, 90, okay? 30, 
45, 60, 90. The reason why I'm showing you this is because um, some people do get a little confused because it is 15 between these, but not 15 here. Okay, that's why I'm breaking up into two different circles so that you can see, oh, because one circle it's cut into 45s, the other circle it's cut into 30s, okay? They put them together on this one, but you can still see it's, okay, add 45, add 45, add 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. And then on the other ones, it's add 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. 30, 30, 30, so on and so forth, okay? So don't let this confuse you because these are 15 degrees apart. Don't look at that, okay? All right, so that is degrees. Now let's talk about radians. Okay, radians gets a little bit more complicated because we are dealing with fractions. Now the first thing I want you to understand is that one full revolution around our unit circle is actually two pi radians, okay? Which means half of that is gonna be pi radians, okay? And of course we have zero radians because that's where everything is gonna start. All right, so now, since we're dealing with um, what we just went over as the 45 degree angles, now we're gonna talk about that in radians, okay? 45 degrees is pi over four radians, all right? How do we get to that? Well, if we look at just this semicircle, right, and half a revolution around a circle is pi, how many times is that cut up? One, two, three, four. So this is pi over four. This is another pi over four, another pi over four, and then the last pi over four, okay? Which is exactly how we're actually going to find our angles for this top part. We're gonna add pi over four each time, okay? So pi over four plus pi over four is two pi over four, okay? Reduce that down, that becomes pi over two, which makes sense because this semicircle is cut into halves, right? So pi over two. Now we're just gonna add another pi over four, so this was one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four right? Add another one, we get four pi over four, which reduces down to pi, okay? Add another pi over four, and we're just going to write four pi over four over here, because then when we add it again, we get five pi over four, okay? This one is actually six pi over four, but it reduces to three pi over two, okay? Six pi over four, so this will be seven pi over four, and now we're gonna add it again to get eight pi over four, but that reduces to two pi. Okay, so that's how we can easily get our radians for the pi over four or 45 degree angle angles. Okay, what about the other ones, the 30, 60, 90 angles, but as radians? Okay. So again, we have zero radians, pi radians, and two pi radians, because it goes all the way around. Now, how many times is this cut? One, two, three, four, five, six. So 30 degrees is actually pi over six radians, okay? And now we just do exactly what we did with the pi over four. We just keep adding pi over six each time and then reducing. So one pi over six, then we get two pi over six, which reduces to pi over three. Then we get three pi over six, which reduces again to pi over two. And if you'll notice, that's exactly the same as what we got up here. It needs to be the same, same circle. Okay, three pi over two, so then we get four pi over two, or six, four pi over six which reduces to two pi over three. Okay, then add another one, we get five pi over six, which does not reduce. And then here we get six pi over six, which reduces to pi, seven pi over six, eight pi over six, which reduces to four pi over three. 
This is 9 pi over 6, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. 9, 10 pi over 6, which reduces to 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6, and then we get 12 pi over 6, which again reduces to pi over 2. A little help in my tr um, tips and tricks when it comes to mapping out a unit circle with just radians. If you'll notice the radians or the angles that are the closest to the x graph or the x axis are the ones that are over 6. Okay, the ones that are closest to the y axis, those are the ones that are over 3. Over 3. Okay. So that kind of helps you remember, okay, these I don't have to reduce, everything else I will have to reduce. And one thing you will need to know is how to convert between degrees and radians. So for that, we have a little formula, of course. Okay, so if you have degrees and you're trying to go to radians, you do x degrees times pi over 180 degrees is going to equal your radians. Okay, and if you want to think about it this way, you want your unit of measure degree to go away, right? Now, if you have radians, which is usually something pi, right? You're going to multiply by the flip of this. 180 degrees over pi is going to give you your x degrees because you want that pi to go away, right? It's easy as that. That's how we convert from degrees to radians. All right, so here are our triangles from geometry that we're actually going to get to use here. Okay, so from what I said earlier, remember that our hypotenuse is always going to be 1 because on our unit circle, okay, if we drew a line here, okay, that's a 90 degree angle. This is going to be our 30 angle and this is going to be our 60 angle. So if you notice, our hypotenuse is 1. Same thing if we dropped a line here on our 45 degree angle. So this angle is 45. This angle is 45 because this angle is 90. Okay, if we dropped a line here, okay, we still have 90 here. This whole angle is 60, which leaves this angle to be 30. Okay. So let's go back to our equations. So now let's start with our 30 degree angle here. Okay, our hypotenuse is one, so we're gonna set two x equal to one. Now, one thing I forgot to say, sorry. I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna show you how to get our x and y values on the unit circle. If you don't need to show this on a test, feel free to skip this because this is just to show uh, those students who need to know how to show on their test how they got the x and y coordinates or the sine and cosine coordinates on the unit circle, okay? Um, so if you don't need this, skip past it. But if you do need it, here's how I do it. It's I found this to be the easiest way. So you do need to memorize your 30, 60, 90 triangles and your 45, 45, 90 triangles. But after you memorize that, here's how we go and go about doing this. Okay, so we set our hypotenuse equal to one, solve for X, okay? And now we just fill it in. So we have, actually, let me get a different color. So 2 times 1 half is just going to be 1, which we already knew. This side will just be 1 half, okay? Now, even though this will be 1 half square root 3, it's more accurately going to be root 3 over 2. Okay, so 
So now we do the same thing for, well, since these are the same triangles, just set up differently. Again, we know our hypotenuse is one. We know this short side is gonna be one half. And we know this side is gonna be root three over two. Okay, now what about our 45, 45, 90? So we take our hypotenuse, root two times x, and make it equal to one. Okay, divide both sides by the root two. Okay, since we can't have a radical in the denominator, we're going to rationalize it. So x equals root two over two. So now let's do that. So this side is going to be root 2 over 2. This side is going to be root 2 over 2. And again, our hypotenuse is 1. All right, so now let's go back to our unit circle and fill in our x and y or sine and cosine coordinates. Okay, so here's the unit circle that we are going to fill in. Okay, I've just given you kind of a blank one. And you can see I've written in our degrees and the radians are already there, okay? So here are our triangles that we just made. So first, let's start with our 30 degree angle, okay? X and Y. Let's look at our first triangle here. So if we draw a line here, right, we know that this is 30, this is 60. So we're going to be using this triangle right here. Now, we're going to be thinking about this in terms of x-axis and y-axis. So horizontal component versus the vertical component, okay? Our point is right here, okay? That is this point right here. So our horizontal component, or our x value, is root 3 over 2, okay? Now our y component, or the vertical component, is going to be 1 half. So our point is root 3 over 2 and 1 half. X, Y, again, cosine and sine. If you get confused, the great thing about cosine and sine is that it's alphabetical, just like X and Y. So which comes first? X. Which comes first alphabetically? Cosine. So cosine goes with X, Y goes with sine. So that also helped me forgot to mention that earlier. Okay, so now let's look at our 45 degree angle here, okay? It's really great because our horizontal component is root 2 over 2. Our vertical component is root 2 over 2. So our point is just root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Nice and simple. The 45s are really great. 45s and 90s are wonderful. Okay, so now let's look at pi over 3. So we know if we drop an ang or a line here, this angle is 60, this angle is 30. So we're dealing with this triangle, okay? Again, our horizontal component is 1 half. So our x, our cosine, is 1 half. Vertical component is root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2, okay? Now, straight up here, Okay, we have no horizontal component and just a vertical, and the point is just 0, 1. All right, so now let's look at these guys. So as you can see, we're crossing the y-axis, which means our x values are going to be negative, okay? If we drop a line down here, we know the angle here is 60, because that's 30, 60. So if we drop a line, we have 60, Okay, again, our horizontal component is one half. However, since we're on the other side of the y-axis, we're going negative. So it's negative one half. Okay, vertical component, we're still going up, so it's still positive. So root three over two. Okay, now root two over two, or um, three pi over four, again, it still sticks with root two over two except which one's gonna be negative? Our x value. So negative root two over two, comma positive root two over two. Okay, so here our angle is 30, so we're going with this triangle. Horizontal component, root three over two, 
but it's negative. And vertical component, one half. Okay, so here, our point here is negative one, zero. Now let's move on to the bottom half. Okay, so again, our angle here is 30. So we're dealing with this one, horizontal component, root three over two, but it's in the third quadrant, so everybody's negative. So negative root three over two, negative one half. On a 45 here, so it's negative root two over two, negative root two over two. Okay, our angle here is gonna be 60. So we're dealing with this one. So our horizontal component, negative one half. Vertical component goes down root three over two. Okay, this point is just as is. So it is zero, negative one. Okay, so now we're in the fourth quadrant where X is positive and Y is negative. So our 60 degree angle, so this is going to be positive one half because we still went to the right, but we're going down negative root three over two. Okay, the 45s, so positive root two over two, negative root two over two. And our last one, well not last one, but 30 degrees, so this one, root three over two, negative one half, and our point here, one, zero. And there you have your whole unit circle done. Sines and cosine, and also degrees and radians. Okay, so now let's talk about some tips and tricks that I do for myself. Um, one thing I wanna show you before we get into that is that these angles and points are reflections of each other. So if you notice, this is root three over two, this is negative root three over two, this is one half, this is one half. You just have to remember, oh yeah, which one's positive, which one's negative. So if you look at this, the points that are closest to the x-axis, they're the same. It's just some are negative, some are positive. So again, you're in the first quadrant, both are positive, root three over two, one half. Go over here, only the x is negative. Negative root three over two, one half. You go to quadrant three, both are negative. Negative root three over two, negative one half. Go to quadrant four, only y is negative. Positive root three over two, negative one half. Same thing happens for the 45s, except you don't really have to remember which one comes first because they're both root two over two. So both are positive, x is negative, both are negative, y is negative, okay? Now, if you look at the angles that are closest to the y-axis, you'll notice that it begins with one half. And how the trick that I remember is that the vertical one stays closest with the vertical axis. So if you notice here, the one half is closest to the y-axis. So on the ones that are on either side of the y-axis, the one half is the x value. So positive one half, negative one half, negative one half, positive one half. And then your only other option is root three over two. So now we're just gonna plug that in. Root three over two, positive, positive root three over two, negative root three over two, negative root three over two. And then you just go back in and fill in your points that you know. Okay, so let me show you how those tricks helped me when it came to the actual test for the unit circle and also other tests that you will get to later in your classes. Okay, so every time I took a test, this is exactly what I did. I took out a scrap sheet of paper. Okay, so I did zero and then I know I have my 45s. And then I had my 30s and my 60s. I made my 45s a little darker so it was easier to see quickly. Okay. 
my teacher timed these tests, so it was a little rough. So, okay, we have zero, we have 90, we have 180, we have 270, okay? Now we count by 30s, okay? 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 8, 9, 10, 11, so 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. Now I do the 45s. So we have 45, 90, 90 plus 45, 135, 180, 180 plus 45, 225. Okay, and then the last one is going to be 315. And then back to 360. Okay, so now what I do is I go in and I do my radians. So first let's do the easy ones, pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, so that was pi over 2. Three pi over four, four pi over four, so pi. Five pi over four, six pi over four, so three pi over two, seven pi over four, and then we get eight pi over four, so two pi. Okay, now we go back in and do the thirties, which again was pi over six, so pi over six. Now I know this is six pi over six, so I know this one's five pi over six, and this is going to be seven pi over six, and this one is eight pi, mm -mm, 12 pi over six, so this is going to be 11 pi over six. Okay, the ones closest to the y-axis are pi over threes, so we do pi over three, two pi over three, and this is 3 pi over 3, so this will be 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and then we get 6 pi over 3, okay? If you can't think of the thirds, just do it by sixes again. So 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, okay? So anytime there isn't a thick line, you just count by the sixes. All right, so now to add in our points. So here's what I do. I know that my 45s are root 2 over 2. So I go ahead and root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, okay? I only do the first quadrant because you know it's going to be mirrored either way, okay? So now this one I know is going to be 1 half root 3 over 2 because the 1 half is always closest to the y-axis. And this one I know is going to be root 3 over 2, 1 half because root three is always closer to the X axis. Okay, so that's always where I start. Oh, and I forget, you know, one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero. And then uh, zero, negative one. Okay, now if you have time, go ahead and flip everything. So this one's going to be negative one half root three over two negative root two over two root neg nope positive root two over two okay so you get my gist all right just get some scrap paper and just write this out real quick okay those are the tricks though one half is always closest to the y-axis root three over two is always closest to the x-axis i know this is really messy but when you're in a rush and your test is timed, I think we only got five minutes to fill in the unit circle. You have to do it really quick. So um, my advice is just to sit down with a blank sheet of paper. Don't even print out the, the unit circle that you can get off the internet. Just sit there with a blank sheet of paper and just do this over and over again until it becomes embedded in your memory and you got this.